Hello and welcome to the Super Show Pod. I am Jonesy, and today I am joined by Jamie. Yo. Say hello, Jamie. Hello, everyone. Um, it's the two of us this week, so we're going to go through some news stories <sighs> from the last week. Uh, we're going to talk about some other stuff as well, hopefully. Some games, what we've been playing, That'd what be nice. we've been up to. Yeah. Um, I haven't played that much at the moment, so I won't have much <laughs> to talk about, Jamie. But, you know. Me neither, mate. It's going to be a pretty dry <laughs> podcast, I tell you. Yeah. Well, although it won't be because we've got some cool news topics to talk about. So, you know, at least that will keep us going. Okay. Um, so first up, um, you can find us on Twitter and YouTube at Super Show Pod. You can also find us on um, podcast platforms of your choice. This include these include Spotify, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. Uh, we always say at this at the beginning, which seems ridiculous, but we're a five star podcast. <laughs> but wait till the end to decide that, and then you know, drop a rating if you think that we're that good. Mm, yeah, you, at least with Jamie, maybe don't give if you don't think I deserve five stars. Wait, so you're asking them to review stars. me personally, yes, or to do yes. so on my behalf. Or both? No, review you personally, because I, I feel like you're a five-star individual. I feel like so. our average rating might sink a little bit here. I mean, nah, I appreciate your shining five-star review of my personality, but there's no guarantee that everyone else agrees. <laughs> I, hey, just read some of the comments on our videos and you can see that everyone agrees. Oh, no. Um, Mentioning those important people, though, not just people that comment on our videos, but the people that keep this going, it is, of course, the patrons. They are very important to us and they're very special. So we'd like to give a shout out to a few of them. Brett Zerbrig, Hacksaw Book Reed, Mindful Pig, Peaswad, Tristan Harris and William Sherry. You are awesome. And the two big dogs, of course, Lonnie Thompson and Skylar Music. You guys, you keep us going. You make this all possible. So thank you very much for supporting us. Um, anybody else who would like to support us on Patreon, you can join our Discord for as little as $2. So if you'd like to go over there and chat to us, you know, not in, in real life, but semi-real life these days, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Textual, it's all good. I've been on there loads in the past couple of weeks, actually. I don't know if that's I've a weird on... side effect of the quarantine and being aside all the time, being lonely, being bored, all of the above. But I've just been hanging out on there, chatting away. I, I seem to do it at the worst times because every, like, I go in, no one's really there. A couple of people will be like, hey, Jonesy, then I'll go and I'll come back. And then you and a whole bunch of other people have had a great, awesome convo. Mm. And then I'll tag on a little comment like, I wanted to join in. But I feel like you never stick it. around. I feel like you're the guy who drops in, tells a joke, and then runs off again. I, so often what happens with that is I'll be, literally be on my phone on Discord, and then I will get jumped on by um, oh, no. like two kids. And then I'm like, okay, I'm playing, I'm playing. I figured Today. it out. I figured it out. Go That's on. a nice diversion, but what you're really trying to say is you only ever go on Discord when you're taking a shit, which is why you do it in three-minute <laughs> intervals. I'm right, I, I? I, I definitely go on there when I'm taking a shit. That's okay. exactly what I do. Hell yeah. Um, no, I, I did uh, today. I took a picture of my dog for Phoenix, so I had to be mm. uh, I had to be out and about. I couldn't be taking a shit right then. Yeah, um, I was I was also going to play some. Um, I was going to go and visit uh, Peaswad's Island on Animal Crossing, but oh, yeah. I, I meant to I meant to message him on Discord and say, but we started the setup for the recording of the podcast, so I couldn't. So Peaswad, I apologise, but I feel like this is an alright apology to say on the pod because we were doing this, so that's why I couldn't meet up with you. There you go. I that apologize. dude's fucking loaded as well in Animal Crossing terms. That bank I, balance is eye-watering. i tell you what, if he had that much money in real life, he would be, he'd, his our Instagram would be like Dan Bilzerian. No. He is rolling If he bells. had that much money in real life, we'd make a new tier on the Patreon. The fucking, <laughs> the, the Peaswood tier. 10 grand a month. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right, so should we talk about what we've been up to for the past week, uh, what we've been playing, what we've been doing? Let's do it. Like we said, it might it might be pretty dry, but let's have a dip well, in anyway. So it, what, what have you been playing, mate? I was going to say, not only will it be dry because it was fucking dry, but it'll be dry because I don't know if people have been able to pick up. Some people are listening to just the audio version of this podcast. It might not be as clear. But not only, Jonesy, do I have an absolutely banging headache right here, like one of those ones that you can touch exactly where it is and say, it's the just the other The front ones are worse. Oh, I think the fronts God. are the worst ones. Thought I was having a stroke or something, but no, I'm fine. Fast. Face, arms, speech, time. And I passed every test with flying colours. Nice. Um, but the other thing is that it's quarter to ten at night. I don't know if people can <laughs> tell that I'm in a slightly like dingier environment than usual. You look like you're sitting in the <laughs> summer sun. But summer sun. Is, do you, are you getting a weird mental thing? Like it's like this is the first time we've ever done a podcast at night time and it just feels weird. Are you getting that? Uh, yeah, like if, if, if I feel I feel more worn out, I feel more tired. I'm drinking a beer. Look, I've got a beer. You're drinking a beer. Wow. Go. 
See, yeah. I'm still... I love these cans. This is super retro, right? Beer and Moretti, if you're watching, sponsor us because I, I like your little cans. If of you're beer. watching, if one of the 1,000 people that tunes in <laughs> is associated with the Beer and Moretti brand, do you know sponsor what? Us. While you're at it, Coke, if you're listening. Nah, of course they're not. <laughs> Big Coke. Um, so, yeah, I, and I also, as I said earlier, it was a bit of a dry week anyway, which never helps. Um, the only real new thing I got around to, because I'm still tinkering, tinkering with. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Gears Tactics, and Call of Duty Warzone uh, sort of spread out throughout my week. The new thing, which I have to thank Mr. Steph Murphy for introducing me to, was Streets of Rage 4. Okay. Um, Interesting. Kind of a... Is, when did that even come out? Is that like a new... Yeah. A new thing? Came out in the last week or two, I think. And it's Jesus. on Game Pass uh, and Game Pass for PC right. as well, which is how I was able to play it. I kind of let it go under my radar because I'm not a big beat 'em up guy got no nostalgia for all the old school games or any of the Streets of Rage games for that matter and then out of nowhere Smurf is like do you want to play something I've just downloaded Streets of Rage 4 I was like fuck it sure I'll do some co-op Streets of Rage 4 and do you know what I had a damn good time with it um, I still think that genre is kind of limited in a weirdly simplistic arcadey way but it doesn't mean right. it's not fun it's fun I, 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 I don't want to overstate it but I'm, I would say that that was my favourite genre at the time like um Golden Axe, Streets of Rage. I used to, I used to be all over. How that are you not on this new one then? I, I, do you know what? It completely went under my radar. I didn't even realise it had come out. Um, so uh, that, that's why. It. That's why I was like, when the hell did this come out? Um, I used to love Streets of Rage. I, it was one of those games. Again, I've said quite a few times. It wasn't one that I owned. It was one that I used to play right. with mates at their houses. Yeah. Um, same as Golden Axe because I believe Golden Axe was on the Sega Mega Drive. I think the same for um, Streets of Rage when I was like a kid and I didn't have a Mega Drive. But those games were incredible. I used to hate those goddamn leprechauns in Golden Axe that would like steal your shit and then run around. You'd have to I hate leprechauns outside of Golden Axe, to be honest. Fair They're enough. always stealing shit. They're always running around rainbows. I don't see the point in them. Kill them all. Uh, and I always want their lucky charms and I can't have them. They're always after me lucky charms. How about but, um, that? So, so um, have you been playing? So that's it. That's the new one. That you, Streets of Rage 4 is what you've been playing. <sighs> that's the new one, Jonesy. And, um, and I'm afraid that's, <laughs> that, that might be it for me. I think I have Games Pass. Do you know what? I'm pretty sure I signed yeah, up Yeah, because you didn't so buy CFDs, no did you? No, I, d- I down- got it free on Games Pass because it was it was when there they did go. the... Um, okay, wasn't it Game Pass was a, a dollar or something for a month? Yeah, I think it still might be if you're signing up for the first time, but I would imagine if you didn't cancel that subscription, you've probably been paying like 10 a month for the last three months without <laughs> knowing it. They get me every time with those things. Oh, yeah. I am the oh, yeah. worst person for signing up and then yeah. just forgetting. Um, my week pretty much looked like last week, so I've played some Animal Crossing um, reasonably regularly. I'm surprised that I'm still doing it. I'm genuinely too. surprised. You tweeted about um, turnip prices, and I was like, I'm amazed <laughs> he hasn't got angry about this game yet and given up I, on it. I, I think I said a couple pods ago that I actually found it quite almost you can you can use it as almost oh, I don't even know what the, the 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 term is but you can use it as like a, a point in your day that you go back to that gives a bit of familiarity because it can get a bit strange in lockdown yes, you did, you did every day yeah. yeah so i find that you know i go on there for 15 minutes in the morning i go on there for 15 minutes in the evening i'm not like harvesting and crafting and doing that sort of stuff like a lot of people do i'm not going crazy i've seen some pretty insane islands that people have put together yeah i'm not doing any of that i'm i'm keeping it simple Terra, I'm doing, terraforming is the one I've heard a lot about. Right. Oh, I haven't even heard that, but I'm yeah, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm I'm just keeping it keeping it basic. I'm doing a bit of trading. I'm trying to sell my turnips. And today, you are right, they offered the low, low price, 69 bells for uh per turnip. Okay. And that was ridiculous. I bought them for 101. That's a loss. Uh, that's not that's not how, how it works. How dramatically does the turnip price change day on day though? Oh, it can be dra- it can be can be, can be madness. It can so be utter madness. They can be dra- worth four hundred tomorrow, and you know you just sit on those turnips for a bit longer. But ah, see, that's the problem. If they go up to like one hundred and ten, and you're like, oh, that's okay. There's a nine bell margin on that, so I'm making a profit. So you're like, I'll wait for tomorrow. Then tomorrow there are eighty. You you stitch yourself. Yeah, up but you, you know can't what you do? keep them more than a week. Oh, you can't keep them more than a week. Okay, no, I you assumed, can't sell them. I assumed you could just sit on these turnips indefinitely, like gold, and watch no, the mate, price Saturday fluctuate. Saturday night. Saturday night you've got to offload those goddamn turnips or Sunday morning you've got a lot of turnips you can right. sell so what you're telling me is that um, tomorrow night or Saturday night whenever it is everyone on my Twitter feed is going to be on suicide watch because they're all sat on turnips <laughs> they can't shift 
all doing an Elijah Wood and begging to get into other people's islands. <laughs> but see, that's why Elijah turned up because it was, I think it was 520 or 590 odd bells for turnips that she was getting in uh, at her store, which is insane. So Elijah's like, I, I'm not too proud. I'm rocking yep. up to your island to get that sweet, sweet turnip you juice. Got to le- leverage that stardom at some point in your life. He didn't <laughs> do go through three Lord of the Rings films of turmoil <laughs> to just fade away into irrelevance for the rest of his life. He needs to get his turnip prices. He does. He, got mate, he does. He does. I always get confused with him and Elijah Wood. Those two blend together. For the, like, we're Toby talking Maguire. about Sorry, Elijah. Toby Maguire. Well, you really do get him confused. Toby Maguire. See, <laughs> the thing is. I don't get them confused, I think, because I grew up at a time where the first thing I saw Elijah Wood in was Lord of the Rings, and the first thing I saw Tobey Maguire in was Spider-Man. I had no That's not the of... first thing you saw Elijah Wood in. What's the first thing I saw Elijah Wood in? Back to the Future 2. Nope, I first saw Elijah Wood in Lord of the hey, Rings, you... The Fellowship of the Ring. Had you not seen Back to the Future 2 before? I've you still never seen Back to the Future 2. That's how what? I know I didn't watch it first. You are despicable. Am that I, is... though? Okay, I'm going to give a shout-out to, to another YouTube channel at the moment because uh, Josh Gad, you know, Olaf, oh, started yeah, doing yeah. this Reunited Apart thing, and the next one he's doing is Back to the Future. So he's reuniting some of the cast of Back to the Future. Okay, but... So if... Here's, Sorry? Here's the thing. <laughs> I can tell Go you on. one person who might... Well, actually, it might be wrong, but I can guess one person who's not going to be in that live stream, and they are the reason I refuse to watch Back to the Future 2. Okay. Because I am Team Crispin Glover. (laughs) And they did my boy dirty. No, he did himself dirty. No, he he didn't. He asked for more money. They said no. The reason they said no was because they thought it would be legal to t- to get put prosthetics on a different actor and pretend it was him and use his likeness. They literally had to change the Screen Actors Guild rules because of what he went through. Oh, because that's the grand the Crisp- granddad. No, comes Crispin, in and two? Crispin, Crispin Glover is Martin McFly's is George McFly. No, yeah, yeah. So he's so he's George McFly because yeah. they have a weird thing, right? So Leah Thompson plays the mum. And, jo- and Crispin Glover plays the dad, but then Leah Thompson plays the great 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 grandmother as well. Okay, but then Mar- then um, Michael J. Fox plays the great. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So it gets a bit odd, which is obviously because of the Crispin Glover thing. So, but then All you that- did have in Back to the Future Two. You had you're right. You had the actor with the fake who fake Crispin yeah, Glover. He had a fake chin and a fake <laughs> nose, and there were also things yeah. where they would like shoot him from behind or use archive footage from the first one. But they did all right, of that, right, right. and they, in the end, they credited him as like Crispin Glover as like as archive footage of Crispin Glover or something <laughs> weird like that. And it's so, like okay. the dude had refused to be it. The dude didn't, was not in it and didn't get paid. It, it depends how much he asked for. That that is the important thing because you're absolutely right. If he if he asked for a, a if he saw it for what it was and was like, okay, this is epic. You need to give me some more money. That's reasonable. If he went completely off the deep end, if he yeah. jumped the shark and he's like. Multiply that by ten, then no, nah, man, you can't do that. I'm the star of this film, the film, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, I, I, he's, he's, I he's not Michael J. Fox. Come on, no, he's not. But he was really good in Charlie's Angels. So shout out to Crispin Glover. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Crispin Glover live stream hosted by Josh Gad personally. <laughs> um, but that was going back to my original point. That's the reason I never confuse Elijah Wood and Tobey Maguire because you can't get much more different than than Spider Man and Frodo than Peter Parker and Frodo, and so they never crossed over in my head. So I didn't know them as fair kids enough. or younger. Oh, I see. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I, I've always thought of them both as kind of... I don't mean it in a mean way. Maybe I do. I don't. Like, kind of wet actors. Wet? They're very, like... Yeah, they're a bit like, meh. I need a definition for that that goes beyond a sound effect. Wet. I don't want to... I don't... They're a bit melty. They're just melty. a bit like... We just... <laughs> it still doesn't mean anything. I don't... Okay, people listening to this and watching this will know what I mean. If they, if an actor's a bit wet, they're just a bit nothing. They're just a bit... You imagine that you bumped into them on a dry day and you'd come away a bit damp. You're like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, they've got a bit... They're just a bit, like, sa- sa- soppy, sappy. I don't I don't know, man. Okay, well, I feel like words the, the, more wor- the more words you throw out here, the better picture I'm getting. I, uh, I, think, I don't know how to describe it. I think wet might be a word that people use nowadays. I don't keep up with the lingo, but I feel like I've heard I it. I don't think it's I don't think it's lingo. I think that's I've always said like I thought that. 
I don't know. Anyways, let us know in the comments if you know what I mean by the fact that they're a bit wet. Should we do, <laughs> should we do, a, should we do a poll? Elijah Wood, Toby Maguire or Crispin Glover? Choose a, choose who's wetter. Who's the wettest? <laughs> we should do a poll. Who's the wettest out of those three? Yeah. Wicked. Well, now uh, we so said it, we're going to forget, of course. <laughs> the other thing I was playing um, this week was some more Doom. Um, I'm, I'm still really enjoying Doom. I Good. will say, like, I did have to... I'd just done the section where you defeat the... Um, uh, the the Doom Slayer kill, Hunter. I, don't, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, you know the big horn dude the, who flies ma- around. Marauder or something like it's that. It's not the Marauder. It's the it's the guy who hovers on the little metal. Platform. Oh, the do like yeah, the Doom Slayer or the Doom Hunter, something like the Doom Hunter. So I think it's the Doom Hunter. So you fight one of them, and then the priest is. Oh like, my God, Jonesy, you're on like the here third are two mission. More. Sorry, you're on like the third mission. Oh yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not that far into that game at all. Yeah, so I've killed the second priest basically. So I need to kill the. I'm past that. But what I'm saying is, I've done those two. I killed the second priest. But when it was like you kill this hunter guy, then you kill the second two. Then I did a load more, and then I got onto a section which was just so many goddamn enemies. I'm uh, taking out the nest with the arc uh, blaster. It was called. I was like, I need a break. <laughs> So yeah. I think I played it last week, um, and then I haven't played it since. I'm like, I just need some chill, some chill time. Just Fair relax. enough. And some... like, Doom Eternal can be good, but also not chill. Those are two things that are not mutually exclusive. Ex- yes, it's it's very good. It's not chill, and I need. I feel like I just needed some chill. Um, oh, so I do have a TV series to mention because okay. I did watch a TV yeah. series, which is very cool. I watched season one of Ragnarok. Ragnarok. I don't know if I can say. It. Do you mean Ragnarok? Ne- <laughs> oh yeah, but it's the it's the Norwegian one on um, yeah, but you're English Netflix. Yeah, but we what? So it's got subtitles in it. So it's oh, but I a, it's, I like can we? I don't want to get a, take us down another little side conversation. But which is more correct, pronouncing a word in the language? Because what you're doing there is you're taking a word that does have an English pronunciation, which I believe is Ragnarok by most accounts. Ragnarok. And you're doing. Yeah, but that's not an English pronunciation. That's just that's us saying all, that's it in our our, accent. Okay, but like it, it gets weird to me where you start doing the accent that the people who are from there would use on a word that exists in English. Like it would be like if I if you said, "Oh, where'd you go on holiday this this week?" and I said completely <laughs> ironically, I said, oh, "I went to Paris." <laughs> what, what are you laughing about? I, I, I went to Paris. Like- I don't well, think oh, that's the I, same. I, I, it's part of my European tour. I'm off to <laughs> I'm off to Barcelona next. <laughs> I wouldn't say it either if I was talking about countries, but you know, I like saying it. I like the way they say it. So that's but what we I'm don't do it about. for anything else. It's just one of the things I've never understood about certain things like that. It's just fun to say it like Fjörgen Fjörgen from the Fjörgen Fjords. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, but you know what? It's a really good series. So they've got, I think, and they've confirmed a second series now as well. Um, I'm not sure when they confirmed the second one, but it's in case nobody's seen it. It's, it's a modern day. It's like post Ragnarok. It's a modern day setting where. Oh. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to like give any spoilers away in case people haven't seen it. So it's kind of set in a small town in Norway, which is the last. It, it was the last town to leave the old religion. Um, okay. Before ever, before it turned Christian. Um, but there are some sort of superpowered people who live there, like a family of. Well, not superpowered, but they're they're obviously not humans. They talk about it a lot. Um, and then an, a guy comes into the town with his family. He's young. I think he's like seventeen years old. Um, and an old lady touches him, and she's like, "Ah, oh, yes, you're you're someone." And then he starts to um, he starts to find out that he's super fast, super strong. He can do all these things. It's it's almost it's it's almost like a weird Norwegian. Um, Smallville. Oh, and that's okay, it. that's an interesting way of selling it. Um, but because he does, like you know, he he goes to the running track and he like runs and he times himself. And he's like, I just broke the world record for the hundred meters. But it's it's a it's a really cool kind of small town. Um, it feels like an I don't know who who made it, but it feels like an indie TV show, and it's very it's really cool. I liked it. I thought it was very good. It's a fun sort of weird quirky take on. Uh, gods and blah 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 blah. So, was and, it, I'm, and I'm glad there's a second season. Was it at all inspired by not not the first show, but your decision to watch it inspired by Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or was that coincidence? It was definitely a part of it. Um, I like that mythology anyway. Like I, I've I've been into it, and you know, and you've only got to look at games in the recent sort of time that have touched upon that, and they're always wicked. Um, and so I'm kind of into that anyway. And then my wife was like, "Oh yeah, that sounds really cool. Should we watch that?" And I was like, yes, let's watch that. Definitely in part because of Valhalla. So yeah. But yeah, um, check it out. It's on Netflix. It's pretty cool. I would say that I would check it out, but 
I feel like I'm batting a zero for uh, successfully watching TV shows that people recommend me because I've got, I mean, ignoring the stuff that I hadn't seen in the last six months, even in the last two weeks, I've been overwhelmed with recommendations. And it's good that there's so much good TV out there at the moment because I feel like a lot of people need it. I'm just so rubbish at working TV into my day-to-day lifestyle, I guess. Uh, for, yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's it, it definitely, my lifestyle definitely makes it easier because we, you know, everyone out there probably is like so bored of me saying, but because I've got kids and I'm married, like, it's literally like my wife and I put the kids to bed and then we go, Ugh, and we just collapse and just yeah. go, should we just watch something on the telly and then we put something But on. that is where I go, oh, Warzone time, I guess. And then I load up Warzone right. and then that's it until 4 a.m. And then Which I, I can't- get really angry and say, Oh, you know what? I'm never playing Warzone again. It's laggy and it's terrible. It's the worst game ever made. 48 hours later, I'm over it. I'm back. Back on it. Eight I do wins love a bit now. of Warzone. Eight. Eight wins. Eight. That is amazing. Like I said, I still. I'm pretty sure I've. I've got one that I didn't even get. So, you know. But I. That obviously it's a little bit tough when I'm sitting there with someone else. You feel a little bit cheeky to go. Can you just go over there? I'm just gonna. Oh yeah, for sure, game. for sure. Like I usually wait till she goes to bed and then I play some Warzone. But yeah. Yes. Anyway, so sh- shall we move on to some news? Let's do it, mate. Let's do it. Plenty happening this past week, including the thing that we delayed recording time for. <laughs> maybe not yes. worth it, but it, it happened. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. So, um, yeah, in case nobody, in case people don't know, we normally record um, midday, but today at four pm um, BST time. Um, we had the Xbox Live, so we delayed the recording of this until the evening so that we could watch that um, and we could soak in some of the awesomeness that Xbox were putting out because they were giving us some of the first looks at third-party uh, gameplay stuff that was going to be on the Xbox Series X, which obviously launches later this year. So we wanted to have a look at that so we could sort of... I suppose we could we could talk about it a little bit on our podcast and we yeah. could say what, what was cool on there. I, I really enjoyed it. Oddly. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, I don't let's start. Let's why. start. Let's start with the positive angle. Even if you can't put it to words, try. It was. It was you know. I liked. I kind of. Obviously, they were doing it remotely. Yeah. Um, which I. Which I think they did a fine job of. I don't really understand why a lot of those people who work in the tech industry have really shit audio um, <laughs> and bad webcams. Like you've. You could just surely. I mean, we're doing Jonesy, this, yeah, Jonesy. <laughs> but go back and watch the uh, Super Show from like ten episodes ago when we were at Chris's <laughs> house, and try and figure out why three professional editors with thirty <laughs> combined years of experience couldn't figure out how to make a podcast sound good. That is a very, very good point. But um, no, I, I think hey, they they did a good job. I actually we've talked on a WhatsApp group before about how. Um, Xbox are doing in their PR game and the build up to next gen and how PlayStation are doing in their build up to next gen or lack of build up um, yeah. into next gen at the moment. And I kind of feel like this was just another step in the right direction for Xbox. It was, um, there was a couple of missteps for me. So um, okay. I liked the game that they opened the trailer with, which um, I believe was, uh, oh God, I'm going to Bright tell Memory you. Infinite. Bright Memory Infinite, yes. Which, um, that's a kind of an interesting one to open with. It looked very good, um, and I think it's cool that they opened with that. It was a bit of an odd one because that, as, a st- as I understand, that game already came out in some fashion on Steam as a demo, which was just yeah. called Bright Memory, It was being made... Sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to say, I think it was almost made to look episodic. Like, the thing that came out was called Bright Memory Infinite Episode 1 or something like that. Yes, and it's from a one-man band called FYQD. Um but so I, I'd read a little bit into it um, before coming on here, and effectively he sort of said he made episode one in order to get the backing to make a fully fledged game, which is what Infinite is going to be. So now episode one is kind of a standalone demo version. Um, but hey, like running on that hardware, it looked absolutely incredible. Um, mm-hmm. The mashup of genres was very cool. Um, well, the game looked <laughs> well. Running if you're on in, you know, running on that hardware. Dot, running dot, dot, dot. running on that hardware. Um, but yeah, that looked very good. And then I think they had um, a, a dri- uh, what was it? Dirt, I think was the Dirt next five, game that they sort yeah. of had on there. Dirt 5, which again, looked fantastic. It's kind of odd these days because I almost feel like it's harder and harder to distinguish between each generation and how good up and coming stuff looks. Yeah. Because a lot of the things we're going to get um, in the improvements from this gen to next gen are going to be almost quality of life improvements. They're going to be the fact that devs don't have to worry about loading times. They don't have to worry about um, a lot of other stuff. So 
but you can't really see that in a vertical sli- in a in a video in a vertical slice of a game. It's it's a lot harder to show. But everything looks fantastic. Obviously, you would expect it to look great. Yeah. Um, well, so what else? What else did they show? I'm I'm, um, I'm struggling to think I mean, of a few things. Other than we- so. You- to add, if you add AC Assassin's Creed Valhalla to the uh, list, yes, which debuted a sort of ninety second, they called a gameplay trailer, but really I that was gonna, meant was <laughs> this one isn't cinematic this time. It wasn't. I was going to pause on this. I was going to talk about this after because. Oh, well, we can like, come back to it. Let's come back to it. Yeah. Okay, because <laughs> everything else pretty much was uh, an indie game or like or, or, or a smaller scale game of some kind. Lots of things that are going to launch on Game Pass. There was a adventure looking game called call of the sea one of those kind of like first person explore a new environment kind of thing uh we saw madden nfl 21 um, of course yeah with Mahomes, Mahomes, my yeah. boy super bowl winner um, heading it up not a game i necessarily expected to see uh, you don't really announce madden games i guess in this day and age they were a foregone conclusion no. shout out to david brent but um it was interesting to see it on this platform, at least. There was a Bandai Namco kind of anime-inspired, what looks like a some kind of uh, action game of some nature called Scarlet Nexus. There was the weird HR Geiger-looking alien thing called Scorn, with lots of things signing out of other things and bits dripping everywhere. A Which co- was Cor- Corvus. Corvus was the uh, kind of weird... Oh, cor- like, no, it's Chorus. Freaky- it's, it's Chorus. chorus. Yeah, they, sorry, they, that's chorus, very confusing because the, the the U of chorus is uh, stylized as a V, so it looks like I chorus, but, it all, chorus. but it's called chorus apparently. Yeah, um, that's we should say twenty twenty one. Well, so, so we should say that the reason that they're showcasing these third party titles is because they're actually going to do a first party showcase um, in July. So that's yeah. why we're getting a lot of that stuff now. But yeah. the, the the biggest thing, as you said, was. Um, and to be, it was a little bit cheeky, not, not cheeky. I, no, do you know what? It was actually very good planning, but the the reason I think a lot of people were probably watching was specifically for the Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay that, um, gameplay trailer that they were talking about. And as you have already alluded to and said, um, it was a 90 second gameplay yeah. trailer because I, I watched it and I've got to admit, I was kind of annoyed. I was expecting to see some lot not just in engine um sort of this is an engine cinema or cinematics or stuff from the game i was expecting to see some actual gameplay i remember the first time we saw the gameplay um for god of war uh, and it was incredible and i was kind of hoping for that i suppose yes, yeah um i um, think we were all hoping for that on some level so you know don't feel un- like unjust in that desire but that it was a weird one because i think i'm sure that they I'm sure they didn't mean to mislead people, but I immediately after the fact did see quite a few people complaining about the fact that it was it was not really what they'd said it was going to be. And a lot of yeah. people felt like they'd gone to the event maybe specifically for that, and then they've got not what was promised. And then the second half of the trailer was the trailer we've already seen. So, uh, you know, um, I suppose is what it is. Yeah, and um, always with these kind of events, and it was true of E3 and Gamescom, and it's true of any of these kind of in between events that pop up and and uh, go out on their own like this one did, I think the reaction to them, whether it's positive or negative, is always going to be that balance between to what ex- what were you expecting from it, and I just think that sometimes gaming fans in general sometimes have a little bit of trouble uh, reining in their expectations. Um, I will say that outright, and there were a lot of people, like, if you were to look on Twitter or comments uh, threads and things like that around this event, people were saying, well, what could we see? Maybe Elden Ring, or maybe they'll announce the new Batman and stuff like that. And it's one of those things where I sound like a dick when I say shit like this, and maybe I'm being a dick. Like, if you thought Elden Ring was going to be at this thing, or if you thought a new Batman was going to be announced at this thing, I could have told you you were wrong before it started. So ultimately, (laughs) you're to blame. As, as um, harsh as that sounds. But you, no, no, you are not being a dick. Okay, but anyone who thinks Jamie's being a dick right now, it is years of experience and knowing the sort of things Wait, you can expect it's and years what's of disappointment. <laughs> All right, okay, like, you can frame it like that. I guess, it's, yeah. it's years of being that guy that thought anything was possible. And the reality is, as you now know as well, Jonesy, like, the longer time, the more time you spend tracking and following and watching the games industry the more obvious it is when things are and aren't going to happen but i will say i will concede that i completely agree with you that i expected much more assassin's creed valhalla than we actually got and i was also just hoping that the nature of 
the third part, the size of the third party reveals was a little bit more exciting. I think like Madden was a good get, Dirt was a good get, um, but the fact that and I think to announce games outright at some at this is always cool. Uh, um, and it's not to say that they didn't look exciting, but I was hoping for just it was hoping it would pack a little bit more of a punch, even if it was that okay. th- that same trajectory and maybe it was twice as long, meaning we got one or two other little pops along the way. I'd have been fine oh, by that. A couple more peaks as opposed to just the yeah, yeah the, the few we got. I, I think, like I said, overall, I, overall, I was, I was, I was quite impressed. I thought it was better than I thought it was going to be, but I did go in with a low expectation, so right. maybe that's why. And you're, you're not an Xbox guy, so everything <laughs> I'm not from the outset guy. was like, will it impress me or no? Yeah, and, and I do think they, did, I do think they good, that I do think they did a good job. Um, but hey, I mean, there's there's definitely more to come, and I think we'll all be looking forward to the the July event to see the uh, right the first party showcase because yes. um, it's always exciting to see what's coming around the corner when it's when we're talking new gen, um, especially when they're this close to launch. Um, it's a mm-hmm. super exciting time. Uh, but I think we should talk a little bit about uh, Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest, which is um, right. It's well, it's it's kind of it's not started yet, but no, it, it kind has. of is. It has. The, the, today, is it today, today's live stream was the first event of Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest. Ah, I thought this was almost like the EA um, access just before E3. You know, like it wasn't no. officially well, part. That, but it was that's kind the of weird part. thing about the Summer Games Fest, and we've been joking about this on the Discord for the past couple of weeks, is that. When he announced it, it sounded like he was going out of his way to kind of pull lots of people together and get things organized on his terms and that he would host things and whatnot. And there will be an element of that. Like when we get to when Gamescom would have been, there will still be something that resembled the opening night live show that he will host. He's also hosting a game reveal on the 12th, I believe, as an example. Right. But then the strange thing is, this was an inside Xbox stream that was produced and hosted and run entirely by Xbox and Microsoft with, to my knowledge, no involvement whatsoever from Jeff Keighley, and yet it was still a part of the Summer Game Fest. That's why I basically... Oh, right, okay, yeah. I I think he's basically come up with a bracket. He's come up with a framework. He said, look, all this shit is going to happen regardless, but let me say that it's a part of my Game Fest. And if you look at the number of publishers that have signed up, like basically everyone apart from Nintendo and Ubisoft is on board. That's hilarious because so um, I thought, like you just said, I, I guess you know I'm one of the people that was a little bit confused by it. I thought it was going to be uh, in some way presented, led by him, no. um, and that this was just a slight precursor because it runs from May to August, right? So yes. it is. I, I get that it's running. It's supposed to be running very soon but i didn't think this was actually part of it so hold on so you're telling me that maybe in a couple of years time if i ever had the fortune to meet jeff Keeley yes. and i did something fun this summer like let's say that i locked down closed down i go on holiday he's gonna go did you have a good jeff Keeley summer fest and i'll be like i, I wasn't well, there mate and he was like did you go on holiday that year <laughs> that was part of my summer maybe. fest luckily he's not calling it jeff Keeley summer game fest that's just something <laughs> that we've added to but um, yeah, literally, if you go on the summergamefest.com website at the moment, there's a calendar that you can basically add to your existing calendars, like if you use Google or uh, something like that. Um, and the Inside Xbox stream today was listed there. Not only that, but you can actually go to summergamefest.com and watch today's stream embedded on that website. So he's got his fingerprints all over this, despite the fact that you know when we get to... Warner Brothers doing some kind of digital event, or when we get to Microsoft doing their next event, maybe even I don't, he, we don't know whether he's going to be involved with PlayStation. But when all that stuff comes around, he's going to basically be like the guy on the I don't know. He's almost I, I, I'm trying to think of a good analogy, and I can't come up with something. But he's just he's in the periphery, I guess. He's there. It's, it's almost like you know when Quentin Tarantino doesn't write or direct a film, but he knew the guy that did, and then the guy's like, "Can I put your name on the poster?" And it's like Quentin Tarantino presents. It's almost like Jeff Keighley prevents Summer Game Fest, and then anybody yeah. who does anything in this period is is tied to him. So let's let's quickly run through um, the the people that have said that they're sort of tied to it, mm-hmm. uh, just to whet your appetite. So it's Two K, Activision, Bandai Namco, Bethesda, Blizzard, Bungie, CD Projekt Red, Digital Extremes, EA, Microsoft, Sony, Square Enix, Private Division, Riot Games, Steam, and Warner Brothers have all confirmed to be involved. So that is. Yeah. Um, I mean that's that's big. This is this is new E3 because old E3 is now dead. Yeah. Um, for this year, at the very least. Uh, right. Exactly. Um, 
so but hey, I, I I think it's a great idea. I think a fully like digital event is exactly what the games industry needed to do because otherwise yeah. it's it's what the heck are we going to talk about like, for the next... And may- maybe the angle is, like, a lot of these guys would have and will still continue to do their own live streams and their own digital events, but maybe Jeff Keighley's angle was, look, if all of you guys do your own kind of d- disparate, kind of separate events that people have to find out about on their own, follow 10 different Twitter accounts to know that they're happening, do they are they following the right one? Did someone retweet it or not? Do they ever happening on all these different YouTube channels? Maybe Jeff Keighley's pitch to them was as simple as, like, look, yes, you're going to be roped in with everyone else, but it's not going to be like E3. You're not going to be on the same day as other people or things like that. All I'm going to do is create a platform where people have one website to remember, one calendar to follow, one Twitter account to follow, and I will push everyone to your stream on the day it happens. Yeah, and and insofar as that's how it's going to work, I I think that's a really good idea because it it would be a little bit of a clusterfuck if it was if you were trying to track everything, I mean, and you were all going to, you know, all different websites and trying to read different articles about where to see this, where to see that. So I, I think it totally makes sense. Um, I still think the most interesting and the one that I will be waiting for is definitely going to be Cyberpunk, which is uh, June 11th, I think. I think is, is that right? As you were? Yes, I believe it is. I think that might actually be, if I'm not mistaken, the same day as EA's uh, event, which they've basically announced that, yes, EA Play will be going totally digital, perhaps unsurprisingly. Right, yeah, of course, yeah. That's going to be the theme of May, is people saying, yes, we're doing something, yes, it's digital, this is when it's happening. And that's why today's event was really just like kind of the opening of the floodgates. Uh, We know Microsoft are coming back every single month. We know their July one will be a hot one. I've got a feeling that the reason that Microsoft aren't talking about or like they're being really unspecific about their June event is because I've got a feeling Sony will be in June. Um, That might be blind optimism, but I think uh, Sony will be in June. And then, yeah, as we mentioned, even in uh, Jeff's Summer Game Fest thing, you read out all those publishers. Uh, Every single publisher who would have presumably had an E3 press conference with the exception of Ubisoft and Nintendo. So EA, Sony, Microsoft, Square Enix, Bethesda, we know Warner Brothers for this year, and so on and so forth. They're all either committed to appearing at Summer Games Fest, committed to appearing at IGN's thing, have announced their own thing, or some combination of all of them. Um, So... There'll be plenty of games over the next two months, that's for sure. And we'll be playing games over yes. the next two months as well, which is exciting. Yes, we will. Um, EA, uh, talking about EA, they've actually, um, they've also teased a few things, haven't they, in the lead up to their their event. So I think it's um, the remaster of the Mass Effect well, trilogy. Well, we, we, we're jumping the shark a little bit. Um, it was actually from their, their earnings call, because obviously we're reaching the right. end, or at the end of April, mark the end of the financial calendar for a lot of companies and so uh they are now doing their earnings calls and communicating with you know investors and and so on and so forth and ea were the ones that were kind of uh um, as well as activision but EA were kind of the juicy ones uh in as much as what they basically announced in their earnings calls um one of which was about the uh potential for upcoming titles um they talked about fifa 21 madden 21 nhl 21 and one other sports title uh which I would guess is going to be UFC 4. Um, I've been led to believe that that exists, even though it hasn't been confirmed yet. They talked about a couple of things we already knew, like Burnout Paradise on the Switch and Command & Conquer Remastered. But one of the more interesting unannounced titles, everything else is pure speculation, is um, uh, another HD EA title, um, which I believe Venture Beat were the ones who basically came out and said, yes, that is a remaster of the Mass Effect trilogy, which... It's very exciting for Mass Effect fans, such as myself. I, I'm i genuinely like psyched about that. I'd love to get my hands on that. Especially because I've just reminded, been reminded, you have the weirdest Mass Effect story of anyone I've ever heard. <laughs> it's not that weird. Yes, it's, it is. So, <laughs> so if anyone doesn't know, I, I hadn't played Mass Effect 1 and 2, and I bought 3, took it home, played it for about, I guess, like an hour, maybe maybe two hours, and was so blown away that I then stopped playing it. <laughs> like, was like, no. Went out the next day, bought Mass Effect 2, because I'd, I'd seen a lot of stuff about 1, basically a lot of people saying, you can you can sleep on 1, go straight for 2. Went and bought 2, played 2 for like a lot, a decent chunk. Not, I don't even know how far into the game I got. Let's say I played it for like 15 to 20 hours or so. Um, had a fantastic time with it, but then... 
as a lot of people won't be surprised, didn't finish it as I'm prone to 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 do with games, and then never went back to three because I you know not finished two, but the, uh, it was more down to timing and and other games yeah. coming out and all sorts, and I didn't I, you uh, know I was n- oh well but, not not finishing the Mass Effect games is somewhat understandable because they can be chunky. The part of it I just find so funny is that. You took the advice that like the people out there talking about how Mass Effect One maybe hadn't aged brilliantly so literally that you decided to. I just I, there's a disconnect there. The guy who decides he needs to go back and experience more of the story because he likes it so much, yet still doesn't need all of the story. Like, no, it's like it, if it you're playing to a, a movie, story, like, was it? Imagine if I st- it imagine story. if I started reading Harry Potter Six and I was like, oh my god, this is blowing me away. I need to go back and start again at Harry Potter Four. You'd be like, so I'm, what? Uh, I'm a gamer who's like, story's not that important to me. It, story drives what I'm doing, for sure. Um, but it was much more the gameplay, the mechanics, the look. Like, I mean, Mass Effect 3, if, if you then, ever got to play it when it dropped, looked incredible. But then why 2? Fantastic. Why 2? If you, if like, it, why, why? 2 was much closer to 3 uh, in its mechanics, but I'm, in but its I'm look saying, and everything. With Mass Effect 3, you were actively getting the gameplay and the mechanics and the environment that you liked. <laughs> So like, because, why go back and play an older, <laughs> inferior version of that to get more of it? Because, so I did a lot of research into it, and 2 was close enough to 3 that I felt I would get the enjoyment, but it w- but 1 was too far removed, so I went for 2, and I was right, like, 2 was wicked, I gen- I thought it was fantastic. 2's the best um, game, yeah, 2's the best one. 2 was, two was brilliant, I played a lot of that game, um, then, and I, I really wanted to get onto 3, but just because I never quite made it there. And then it was forever like, am I going to go back? Am I going to play them again? But then when, you know, the idea of, an, of a remaster comes out, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm totally into that. Especially when you talk about where we're at in, in gaming now, because it does seem like the idea of playing old games and, and um, games being um, upgraded and optimised and you can just keep playing them forever seems more and more likely. So Yes. Yeah. Although I'm so le- I'm psyched about I'm it. I'm led to believe no Switch version, at least to begin with. Um, so oh, I, I, I don't I couldn't give a shit about that really? <laughs> like, so I, I don't like playing games on that on Switch I really don't okay. I like playing certain games on Switch I, I would never pick up Skyrim on Switch I would not play Fortnite on Switch like I don't think these games uh, for me the control was oh, I can't imagine it. I, I, I'm not oh. as hard on that as you but I kind of get where you're coming from I think it's more just because when things are remastered and things come back it feels like the first question on everyone's lips is is it going to be on Switch and I believe we know the right. answer. Well, we don't know anything, but we believe the answer in this case is no. So that's just something I've, to bear I've, in mind. My Switch is reserved for uh, like little fun. Yeah, turnips. Little fun games or like little uh, self-contained things. I don't want to play a big cinematic, gorgeous universe game on a Switch. Um you know, it's, it's yeah. It would be it would be, it would be a shame if the best game in the history of the Nintendo Switch was set in a big, gorgeous cinematic universe or something. I don't know. It's not that gorgeous. <laughs> like it's not, the. Oh, let's not even talk about oh. Breath of the Wild. I it's, wish it's we like should, a I blocky, 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 cartoony, like blocky. lumpy creature. You know, it's funny, kind of boring, annoying horse can't. Fucking I was, run I was properly. talking to Cameron on our Discord the other day, and he was talking about who he usually agrees with when we have disagreements on uh, on the on the podcast, and he said that he usually agrees with me, um, right. but he, he agrees with you when it comes to Nintendo. And I said at the time, and I might get in trouble for this, but I'll say it again, that agreeing with Jonesy on Nintendo is like agreeing with Hitler on eugenics. <laughs> okay. Look, I, hey, you, you can't, you could see, this is the thing. You can't have a go at me about Nintendo because I was a Nintendo kid. I am born and You're bred You're always Nintendo. talking about your Mega Drive and oh, gold. No, I've never had oh, a Mega I Drive. Gold I was X. Nintendo. I was Nintendo like up until the PlayStation, um, you know, the PlayStation came out. So I had like then, an N64, how I had come, a SNES. How come the other day when you and Peaceworld were talking about Sonic, you were talking about how it was the best game ever and had the best music ever? And I came in talking no, no, about how uh, Mario is. So, uh, sorry, music. Music in Sonic is wicked. Yeah, I, the I music in Mario music is better. better. And if you were a Nintendo kid, you would know that. But see, weirdly enough, I don't even. I'm not really sure how this happened, but even though I was a Nintendo kid, I was definitely not a Mario kid. And um, this always comes up when you, me, and Chris talk about um, Nintendo because I, I played like, 
I, I played a couple of them and I just didn't get it. I was like, this is okay, it's fun. But there were so many better games on the on the Nintendo. Um, me and my brothers played a shitload of like, uh, like John, Matt, Caveman, Ninja, um, Gundam, Wrestling, Pilot Wings. Like what an epic game Pilot Wings was. There was, a, there was a game, I can never remember the name of it, which was incredible, which was like two, it was like a 2D mech warrior game where you fight each other, but your pilot can pop out the top of your mech and it can and hide down little tunnels and can shoot. And that was mm. incredible. I'm that not, was better than Mario. Maybe someone in the comments knows what it is. I feel like that's a reasonable enough description that someone could run with that. I don't know. Definitely yeah, was, not popping was, into my head cool. though. It was like a 1v1. So you'd, there'd be a map and you'd fly around and you'd, you'd, you could hop out and get into another mech because your mech was being destroyed. That was a good goddamn game. Um, but no, Mario and, and um, oh, Aladdin. Oh, come on, man. Aladdin on the SNES. Epic. Epic. Much better. Aladdin, on the, Aladdin on the PS1. I didn't have Aladdin. a Nintendo. Maybe that's why, because I didn't have a Nintendo. I had a SNES and I didn't have a Nintendo. Oh, I see. So yeah. possibly. I had an Amstrad before I had a SNES. So <laughs> I was. Uh, <laughs> I had a Commodore 64. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, let's move on to another news story. Let's talk about a company that I genuinely think we all love. Like I know, I know we love it. I maybe I'm talking for everyone else out there, but um, Ubisoft. Yeah, we, we I, love. Them. I, yeah. They are. I've, a, gone, to, I've gone to bat. I've gone to bat for them more times than I thought I would when things were looking a bit ropey, like maybe seven years ago, and we all realised <laughs> they've had some dark days. Yeah, when Assassin's Creed was it, glitching itself around Paris, and Watch Dogs wasn't as good as anyone thought it was going to be, and everyone thought, "Huh, Ubisoft kind of fucked it." They've kind of turned everything around since then, in my mind, anyway. With a few exceptions, they're doing pretty well. Yeah, and they have. So let's say I let's say I I had a really good, I had a really real soft spot for Ubisoft before, but right. they have possibly just elevated themselves to just <laughs> you know get top of the pile, getting right up there. Because mm-hmm. my one of my favorite games ever made was Prince of Persia, um, the Two Thrones. Oh, was it Two? No, Warrior Within. Jesus Christ, Warrior Within. Um, and of the Sands of Time series in the Prince of Persia, Persia universe. And they have now um, registered the domain for Prince of Persia. Let, well, let's get this right. So they already have, uh, th- I think they already have like Prince of Persia 3.com, Prince of Persia 4.com. They've now registered 5, 6, and 7. Um, right. Which suggests, obviously, that they are going to be making a new Prince of Persia game. Um, I actually made a video about this a couple of days ago. And sort of said how I'm not quite sure where this all lines up because um, Prince of Persia as a series has had obviously some some mobile games. It's had some um, uh, some sort of small like little random titles. It's had three main um, games in an original series. It then had the Sands of Time series, which was three games. They then released a fourth game, which went back to that in 2010 after they had that. Jesus Christ, disgusting, despicable, cell shaded monstrosity heap of shit in 2008. How dare they? Wasn't that bad? Um, it was fine. It's awful. No. History is not against you on this one, James. So history is against it's, you. I, two games ever have I bought and gone home, put in and like got angry and turned off. One of them was Prince of Persia, that cell shaded piece of shit in 2008, and the other was Need for Speed Pro Street that I tried to get my money back for and they wouldn't let me give me money back. Anyway, Ubisoft have registered the domain for uh, six. Well, like I said, they've registered a few, but the story that's come out is that they've registered it for six. So that um, kind of makes me wonder where they're going to be coming back into the series. Yes. Because it should be... It should either be five if you put Forgotten Sands into the Sands of Time trilogy and you assume that's where they're carrying on from, which makes the most sense, right? Because you get the the time play and all of that cool shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but or but there's also there's four stories in the Forgotten Sands game, so it's not one story; it's actually a collection of stories. So then oh, it right, should be okay. more like game eight. Um, if you're if you're talking specifically about stories. Right, so but I, I, feel like, I feel like they're less likely to talk about stories, especially if one game had stories within it, than they are to talk about outright <laughs> games. But at the same time, I think this is kind of... So, I, then, it should be, so be, then this should be seven. Sorry, so then this should be five, which makes sense because they already have PrinceofPersia5.com. Right, but I, what I'm saying is I think certainly they're registering the domains, we can see that, but I would eat my hat if Prince of Persia came back with a number on it like that. I don't think um, it, would, it would. I think it would have a subtitle or it would just be called Prince of Persia. Yeah, I don't sure. think 
Prince of Persia 5 comes out in 2021 because they didn't even put numbers on the old ones. No, they, they never have. Um, so but the, it gets interesting if you think that if this is a continuation of Sands of Time, that in chronologically would make it five, but they've registered the domains for five, six, and seven, which is why it gets interesting because that to me says trilogy. It's just It says even if they're not going to number them, there is going to be a fifth, sixth, and seventh instalment in well, the Sands no, of Time. It trilogy. doesn't say there's going to be instalments in the trilogy. It means they've registered the domains <laughs> and it doesn't mean anything else. Man, I am reaching. I'm going. I'm just going for it. I'm taking all I can get. I want. No, I, hey, I even. I liked the movie. All right. You're Let's the biggest Prince of Persia fan I've ever met in my life, and so I've got, I've got to let you have this epic. victory, right? <laughs> Thank you, mate. I appreciate it. Because hey, look, um, it, it's something that I've been waiting for, and I've talked about far too much on this channel. I'm sure people were like, "Why does this dude keep talking about Prince of Persia?" Um, but there was also something else cool, which you found, um, or you, you told me about this story, which was that not only have they registered the domain, there is also some footage from eight years ago on YouTube for a um, almost like a vertical slice of an idea for a new Prince of Persia game, would you say? Yeah, it, it's very hard to know without getting into the specifics and someone sort of spilling the beans where exactly it came from. But it looks like a vertical slice that's a... Well, I don't know, because a vertical slice can sometimes be cut out from a project that's already in the middle of development and is therefore very representative of what's going to happen. This seems like one of the slightly more speculative ones where it was made right. and you can tell that that's not gameplay that so someone's it controlling. So it wasn't in development? Oh, I believe it, there was, it wasn't. Uh, it must have been some form of development, right? Like that kind of a, a project of that quality and that scale and scope doesn't get made accidentally. Like there's money in that. Sure. Um, so that's so what I kind of someone wondered, was thinking about it. I just don't know how far it went is what I'm saying. I'd seen a few sort of um, uh, a few things where people had suggested that it was almost like a vertical slice of a game, and then I'd seen other people say it was almost like a mock up done maybe by a small team to go. This is the kind of thing that we yeah. could see. It, um, it could it so, could be could be they could both be true. I, I honestly don't know. All I know is that even by today's standards, that looked expensive, and it didn't look like it did. It didn't look like it what games great. looked like, and that's why it looked good, ironically, because yeah, games I mean, don't looked, look like it that. Really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't running in a, in a, on a PlayStation. Right, exactly. Or anything like that, they could yeah. do the Pixar trick and render <laughs> out two frames every seven hundred and fifty three hours. That's why they look so good. Yeah, and then when they get all the way down the line to the end of development, you're like, why doesn't the game look like it looked when we first saw yeah. that thing? That's because like, it was running at one frame a day the, when we built it. <laughs> I've got a damn mosquito flying around. Really? In my, Try and get it. Yeah. Try and get it. No, it's fucked off over near the lights again. It can stay up ah, there. It should know not to fuck with you. Yeah, but I am. I'm always going to be excited about Prince of Persia stuff. I am. Oh, well, actually, I'm take that with a pinch of salt. That for honor Prince of Persia bullshit. Oh yeah, I mean, Ugh. yeah, me neither. But that's for, for that's for honor for you, right? Like, no additional content would have got me to jump back into for honor. <laughs> Not because I hated for honor, but just because I'd had my time with for honor. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. No, I was never going to jump back into that. Um, but hey, so that's a that's a very cool thing. And if that, is, and maybe I'm reaching reaching and maybe i'm pulling far too much out of some um registering of domains which are never going to be the titles of actual games but you know um uh, we can always hope can't we um so should we move on to our final news story of the day let's do it jonesy so this is um an interesting one because it was uh, a news story that popped up um, about techland and specifically a polish article um, that seemed to be suggesting there were a lot of problems at Techland and the development of Dying Light 2. But it seems that a lot of the people that had um, been tweeting about this and have been talking about a translation from the Polish article into the English have now retracted or even deleted those tweets and have now, um, I suppose they don't want to be associated with that story. But there have still been some articles about it. There have still been people from Techland talking about it. So it seems to be a legitimate news topic, yeah, I would say. sure. So why don't you give us the lowdown, Jamie? What's, what's been so going on? The original report came from Polsky Game Dev, and the sources that it was citing have remained anonymous, perhaps for obvious reasons. Um, and as you have said, Jonesy, everyone should kind of bear this with a pinch of salt because a senior PR manager called Ola Sonde, Sondej has already come out and said that it was uh, uh, basically, in her words, totally inaccurate. But the original source claimed, and uh, these, this is all one big quote, it's a total fucking mess. 
Story direction, gameplay direction, constantly changing gameplay fundamentals. Morale is down because they, brackets the management, have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Disorganization on the highest levels is quite pathetic. It's still unclear what the game is supposed to be. A year before the release, other teams are worried about fixing bugs. We don't even have a vertical slice. Um, so that Which was, is that's pretty the, damning. Yeah, that's the slim down. If you like, that's the vertical slice of the original <laughs> report from an anonymous source claiming to be within Techland. We've then, I think since then, we've had some um, people from Techland, as you mentioned, um, come back and talk about the fact that a lot of this isn't accurate. Um, and they've sort of then uh, said, hey, you know, every development has its issues, um, but the game is progressing with yeah. our, our new uh, you, schedule and our new timescale that we've put together. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Do you want the quote from social media lead Krzysztof Sazon? I Absolutely. love all these Polish names. It's This is referring to the uh, quotes that I just read out. It's not true. The game is playable from start to finish. A month ago, we completed our alpha milestone mentioned in the article, an important one for the project. I've been playing it and I'm excited. The main design pillars for Dying Light 2 have not changed since the start of production. It's natural to evolve the various aspects of the game during the development process. There are several reasons for that, such as optimization or improving and expanding the most popular elements. Blah, 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 blah. Um, game development is not straight, a straightforward, simple process. We're hard at work on getting the game ready for you, Mr. Jones. So the, and, and we talked about this briefly before the podcast, but I think everyone's worked in a, in a, in a business at, you know, different stratas of the business. Yeah. And you have, you can have people at certain elements, let's say people more on the ground, like doing the day-to-day -day work, who can have a very negative opinion of what is going on. Um, because to them, it, that's how it appears, right? That's, that's how it seems everything is working. It seems like everything's a complete fucking mess. You can then have people at the top who have a complete the opposite opinion because as far as they're concerned um, they have a top-down view and they can see everything working and they can see all the different elements but actually they don't have much of an idea on the individual um, what individual people are working on how much of a fuck-up it is yeah so I find I think the article is really interesting because I I have to imagine that the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle yeah I imagine that the anonymous source is someone who's thrown their toys out the pram a little bit because from their perspective shit's gone badly and from the top end perspective, I think they're probably being a little bit too, uh, <laughs> you know, like forgiving and saying, oh, no, everything's fine. We've rescheduled and everything's great. I think we've all been a little bit worried about the fact that every piece of Dying Light 2 we seem to be is always the same section of the game. It's always there's a water tower and you've got to decide whether you yeah. give it on to these guys or whether you do this. Um, let's not forget that that game is a uh, is is a world which is supposed to um, develop and change based on your interactions, even down to massive parts of the, uh, the the geometry and the ecology of the environment changing based on what you decide to do. And I'm sure um, I'm sure they knew. I'm not suggesting we know more than they do. But every time anyone's tried to make a game on that kind of scale, they've run into massive problems because they find that hey, you make one decision and that then leads to two more, yeah. to two more, to two more, and it gets insane. Right. And I think we all said at the beginning of development that they could have a world of problems tied to this. And it seems like they have. So I'm going to go right down the middle with this one. I don't know where you're at. I'm going to think that there are a lot of issues, but it's not as bad as this guy says in the article, but it's yeah. not as good as the uh, <laughs> as the people at the top say. I, I'm, I'm, I, am, I am completely with you in terms of there being some truth to it, but probably not to the extent that it's uh, been made to sound in that initial report. Um, and I'm also with you that there's just something inherent to stuff like this when it comes to that creative process. Um, we, you and I, I should say, uh, in our previous experiences at various companies, have been involved in lots of creative processes that have involved, you know, at time, let's say at some points, tens of people working on projects that aren't really that high key or in the public eye necessarily. Um, but still within that context, I have known people that have been dissenting voices that have had shit to say. And I, if I imagine if I Im keep those individuals in my mind, you could probably think of a few as well and say, <laughs> sure. okay, a team of a, a, a company of a hundred people becomes a company of 500 people. The project we're working on goes from a YouTube video to a triple A video game. There are a lot of people who would have loved nothing more than to go to the press anonymously and talk a lot of shit about that environment when it wouldn't have necessarily been true to my experiences. We're seeing that an awful lot right now with Naughty Dog, 
where there were huge reports about the crunch culture and everything that was going wrong at Naughty Dog and how bad a place that was to work, the mismanagement, lots of scathing reports about Neil Druckmann. Jason Schreier was in a strange situation where he was the journalist that went behind the scenes, spoke to people anonymously, and wrote that report. But he was also the journalist who came out when the leaks came out and said, I've spoken to more Naughty Dog employees. They don't support the leaks. They're really upset this has happened. And people almost didn't understand that there were two realms of thinking. It's because in every creative process, you get such a range of people and personalities. It's only inevitable that other people are going to manifest those emotions in different ways. Some people are going to nut up and just keep going and stay quiet. Other people are very outspoken. Some people like to speak, but only in private. And some people want to blow shit up. Some people like talking. Some people, that's their way of dealing with it or getting it off their chest. I know I went a little bit on a tangent here, but that's why I can see there being some truth to this, but also you can't take it all as gospel. No, I, th- I think you're bang on. And that's why I think you, you now see, uh, obviously, the PR side of um, Techland coming out, trying to do some damage mitigation because they're trying to say, no, no, that's not what's going on. Um, because of the end of the day, I suppose, they don't want to worry the people that are waiting for this game to come out. But, uh, you know, it has already been delayed and they're still saying, hey, no, look, it's coming to PlayStation 4 and, you know, Xbox One and blah, blah, blah. And if they delay it too much longer, you know, if uh, I, I don't think they've actually, they haven't given a date for release yet. No. Um, obviously, we're having next gen coming out this year. Um, it's not going to take them that many delays before they start to get to a position whereby that's old hat now for the, for you to be really driving and pushing for a release on, a, on the old generation. It's mm-hmm. only going to be like 18 months down the line when people say, hold on, this game's coming out like a year after the release of these new consoles. Like that is not a state you want to be in. Yeah. I suppose then you could talk about the whole upgrade thing and, and the fact that they can... You could. Oh, I I mean, I have no idea how that's going to work it's, out. It's very but, difficult. And there have been a lot of very notorious cases in the past of games that have gone through development hell, been delayed, missed release dates, got caught up in the console cycle and never been able to catch up. You think about yeah, Two Human, sure. which was a Dreamcast game that ended up coming out on the Xbox 360, like it's a nightmare. Absolutely. Um, and which is a real shame because anyone who played Dying Light 1 knows that that was a fantastic game from a very talented team. And I think everyone was really excited to see... Well, I, I know I was really excited to see a yeah, Dying Light You were at one point too, so. almost very close to this development. Like you saw the game at a uh, T3 at and yeah. you went and played that um, Battle Royale that they made that very quickly got forgotten about before that came out. Um, and yeah, then it sure. all kind of evaporated. Now they've they're in stealth mode. Yeah, I think that's the other issue that you've got with the whole hype train thing. Is obviously to build hype and to keep a game in people's minds, you have to do a certain amount of stuff. But the problem is, um, it kind of is irrelevant if you then can't get your game out for too long a time because you have mm-hmm. nothing. You have nothing to show. People forget all about it, and then you end up people going, "Was that game being made?" And then it just like it wouldn't surprise me at all if we end up finding out that Techland make a new game, a brand new IP, which was based off of the stuff they'd have already made for Dying Light 2 because the production process, if the, if you can believe 90% of what was in the original article, yeah. that the production process was so difficult that they just took a lot of the stuff from the work they'd done and they'd pushed yeah. it into something else. I'm sure <laughs> it won't happen. I'm sure it'll come out. I'm sure it'll be fine. But so you know what's ironic about that? And you talking about games that get caught up in that cycle of missing release dates and development turmoil and being out in the public consciousness for too long to the point where people say, is that game coming out? Is that still a thing? Do you know what that reminds me of? Go on. Dead Island 2. Oh, God, yeah, which, of course, is the same same dudes who are working on... uh, Yeah. Well, Um, Well, not the the same dudes. No, but clearly there's something about the uh, sequel to parkour and free-running infested zombie games in the first-person action genre that are uh, cursed. Yes, absolutely. I, I guess it's just one of those things that's never destined to be, so, you know. Yeah. But, hey, I think that's pretty much all we've got time for today. That's all the news stories that we're yeah. going to cover off. Uh, it's one of those weeks, isn't it? Like like we said at the top of the podcast, it is now quarter to 11pm on a day where we have both been active and working. So, um, apologies, I guess. Well, actually, I'm not going to apologise on your behalf, but I'll apologise on my behalf if I felt a little bit low energy or low key today but it was inevitable 20 episodes in we were bound to hit one of these at one point oh i think we absolutely smashed it Good. i hope everybody you know out there uh, love the positivity <laughs> i hope everyone out there really enjoyed it um remember that you can find us on twitter and on youtube at super show pod but also on podcast platforms any of the good ones you can find us on um you can also reach out to us individually on twitter uh, i am at super show jonesy jamie you are i'm still at atg jamie but that might change at some point but then I've been saying that for six months and it hasn't, so 
Don't hold your breath. Uh, I believe Chris is at Chris J Mono. Is that? Yeah, that is right. Yeah, that sounds right. I was. I'm always low here. Um, but hey, uh, if you if you feel so inclined, please leave a, a comment and a rating on this um, podcast on whatever platform that you are watching on. Be sure to join us next week. And if you if you wanted to, you could always join our Patreon, as we said at the top of the show. Uh, and you can get on our Discord for um, two dollars, and you can come on there and you can talk to us. And we also have some um, other content that we upload to that as well. We need to do some more, but we, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we haven't um, managed to make anything for a couple of weeks actually. Yeah. We we have something in the bag actually that's getting I think uh, Chris is working I, on at the moment. So I, 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 I've it. had something ready to go for a little while as well now, but we usually do them on the back end of these podcast recordings and obviously but it would be a shame to do <laughs> yeah. Patreon content with just the two of us. So when we're all no, we, when we're back together as a trio again. Absolutely. Um but yeah, uh, thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>